Yeah. All right, so our next presenter is David Hayward from Agilon. Who is married, David? Who here has worked in GIS for more than about 10 years or so? Anybody? Yeah. Right, pass down. Who works in one of those big <laughs> How many times do those people say, GIS is not a cottage industry anymore? We hear that all the time. Well, David Hayward disagrees. He thinks that we're still a cottage industry. <laughs> so David's going to tell us what we need to, uh, to get out there. Thank you, David. Thanks, Dave. So really, I'm going to look at uh, how the industry sits compared to, say, maybe the greater IT community, look at some of the, the barriers that may exist, and maybe some of the ways forward for the night of the future. So really, maybe start off on the, some economics. In um, 2007, uh, Gartner reported Gartner reported that uh, IT software expenditure globally was 178 US billion. In comparison, um, uh, GI software was 1.5 billion, and that was from Dara Tech and Second So there's quite a there's quite a gap there between the two. Um, and really, traditionally, it's been seen as a, a very specialised industry. That's where it's come from. I've been working with it since 1992. I worked for a tier two IT company, and I think it still is very much uh, a niche industry. I've talked to a lot of clients who aren't GIS leader and also fellow professionals. How many people can relate to this? You've got a CIO who's responsible for all the enterprise applications, um, but he's not responsible for the GIS stuff. That's done by some random, you know, the, his eyes, random GIS guys in the corner. He just sees them as a source of pain, chewing up all their bandwidth and also all his storage. So I'd suggest that the awareness of really the true value and power of GIS is yet still not being fully realised. And the the, a bit, the analysis and being exposing that to the masses has really been quite limited. Um, but I would suggest though that the concept of location now is fully understood. And that's ranging from uh, location-based services right through to um, the new uh, GPS-enabled cameras. And the, the concept of where am I, where I need to be is fairly well understood. Also, People live their lives more and more on the web these days, and I'd suggest that location really is what's helping to make the web more of a realistic environment. It is what separates us from someone we're communicating to, say, in America, and it really is something that enhances it. So what are the barriers? Well, firstly, how well do we understand the enterprise architecture and the environment that we aspire to be seamlessly a part of? How well, how many CIOs actually understand this stuff? There's a few. Uh, Pedro Lanz is one but really they're an exception. But what does GIS actually stand for? General insurance systems, if you come from Q QBE. Gastrointestinal systems, <laughs> health. It doesn't really explain in itself what it actually stands for. How about the alternative, spatial? What does that mean? It's not mainstream, it's something to do with astronomy. I've had this said to me. You love stars and stuff. You don't want to do, that's not what I'd actually do. So the word itself doesn't explain what we actually work with. So there's an impediment there. So there's been a shift more and more into the use of the terms location intelligence. It's sort of self-explanatory, the mainstream words, and people get a grasp of, okay, I don't understand what you're getting at. Really, the, the main reason for concluding this was really the vision of the eye. It's about interpreting, understanding what location can do. So besides GIS, what about all the jargon we spoke? We just come out with all this stuff and we say it like a second language, and the, the impact of that can be that you just confuse people. <laughs> 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 Not casting dispersion of your clients. The other thing, the visualization aspect of what we do with GIS, the picture says a thousand words, but what, our, what happens if those words are just too many? In that we're putting so much information out there, we're actually losing sight of the key messages that we're trying to communicate, and there's a balance to that. So how do we bridge the gap from location to location <laughs> intelligence? Well, I think we need to look at really who was it that pioneered the awareness of, of location in mainstream society. And with that, it's Google. So what have Google done? What they've done is basically develop very simple applications using simple language, targeting the 80% of users rather than the 20%. And really, people have embraced that. And with Steve, I can now explain to people what I do without their eyes rolling back in their head. Here's another example. When you open up Google, you get information straight away, and you're off. Whereas your mainstream GIS applications, you start with a blank screen. The onus is on you, the user, to go and find the content. So that's obviously going to be a bit of a hurdle. Also, with the web, we need to look at um, things like Web 2.0. It's really about empowering the individual using various means, blogs, and so forth, 
the message there is the individual who can add the content themselves, as opposed to having to rely on the, on the custodians to try and get the information. But then you have the balance. How do you go about balancing the needs, the 80% if you like, of the mainstream users with the smaller 20% who are the ones screaming in your ear saying I want a button for this, this, this and this? It's a challenge. Um, now how do you go about avoiding the hurdles? <laughs> now, in New South Wales government there's a number of new ventures that are happening um, at the moment which is going to help make information more accessible, frameworks to, to really put the hands more into the users. That's an ongoing thing. And now as far as the future is concerned, I think if we get our language right, we focus on the 80%, that GIS in turn, will, in time, will become a part of, G of IT. It'll be just, it's something that's just there. But um, I think if that's the case, then really for the GIS individuals, the demand for our service is only going to increase because we're going to have a much bigger user base that we need to support. Thanks very much.